Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to review a couple of key pieces of information for starting out in this unit, Foundations of Statistics. We're going to review a couple of terms of jargon that are going to be important for us to know throughout the unit. And we're going to start thinking about bias and some critical thinking in statistics. The first thing that you should be doing when you log into Blackboard and start this unit is to watch the Getting Started video and to explore Blackboard. Blackboard has all of the resources that you need for learning foundations of statistics, but it's going to be important that you know how to find them. The other key piece of uh, information for you to read is the unit outline. The unit outline is going to give you the details on the latest versions of the textbook and the software that you require for this unit and the assessment items, so what assessment you need to be doing and when it is due. We provide you with a timeline both as a Word document and in the weekly learning material that tells you what you need to do each week, so what videos to watch, what readings to complete, what exercises to practice and so on. If you have any questions about content for this unit, you have a discussion board which is staffed by several tutors who will be checking most days of the week and will be able to answer queries if you don't understand an exercise in the textbook or an exercise online or something that gets said in one of the videos. If you ever have any study concerns that are of a personal nature, perhaps you need an extension for the assignment or you are having personal difficulties, then this is something that you can email to us. Our email address, sta10003 at swin.edu.au, is checked regularly, uh, but the purpose of it is for questions that are not suitable for discussion boards. So anything that's of a personal nature, or if it's about an assignment answer, because you shouldn't be posting your assignment answers onto the discussion boards for the other students to see. So we're just going to look at a couple of terms of jargon here. And these are very important. Really, they, these are the core of statistics. So the first one is population. And in statistics, when we talk about a population, we're really talking about all of the data, all of whatever it is that we're interested in. But it is something that we define. So the whole population could mean all the people in Australia. But perhaps that's actually not the group we're interested in. Perhaps we're only interested in people over 25. Perhaps we're only interested in people that live in Melbourne. Perhaps we're only interested in students. So the population is something that we define and it characterises the group of people or the group of objects or items that we're interested in. Normally we can't collect data about every single person or every single item and so what we'll do is we'll collect a sample. So the sample is some subset of our population and ideally it is going to be sufficiently representative that it's going to tell us about our population. Later in the unit we'll be finding different ways that we can go about selecting a sample in order to do this. The other term that we're interested in is what's called a variable. So a variable is something that we have measured. So it could be age or height or weight or income. Anything that we're measuring within our sample we refer to as a variable. One other quick refresher for this first week uh, that we want to cover is percentages and proportions. So when we have some, ca some kind of category, we want to work out a percentage or we want to work out a proportion, then if we wish to calculate the proportion, we start with how many of our particular item we're interested in. So in this case, my example, 108 people out of my sample of 800 say that cats should be kept indoors. So to work out the proportion, I just divide 108 by 800 and I get 0.135. If I wanted to represent that instead as a percentage, then I can multiply by 100 and that's the equivalent of 13.5%. If you're a little bit uneasy with percentages and proportions, we've got exercises on Blackboard for you to practice doing these calculations further. When we're talking about categorical variables later on in the unit, it is going to be important that we can refer to percentages and proportions. Finally, in this video, we want to just very quickly talk about bias. In your textbook, you'll be able to read more about bias, uh, but really what we're looking for when we are looking particularly at someone else's statistics, maybe we are looking at 
a news article, maybe we're looking at something that's getting marketed to us, maybe we're looking at the findings of a study. We want to know whether the results that are getting reported to us really are telling the true story about the population. And so we want to try and look out for whether there's anything that's been done in the way that the data was collected or analysed or represented that is actually perhaps misleading. So one form of bias is what's called sampling bias, and this comes from the way that we choose our sample. Uh, one of the key ways around this is if we have some sort of random sampling method. And sampling bias and random sampling we're going to talk a little bit more about later in the unit. Anything else that could create bias we refer to as non-sampling bias. So this could include the collection method, so for instance if we're using telephones to collect our data or if we're ringing people up, then there's going to be a bias because if we, a lot of people in our population don't have a telephone, we're not going to be able to reach them. It can also include things like questionnaire design, the way that questions are asked, perhaps they're confusing, perhaps they are misleading. Uh, if it's a study where there's incentives, perhaps people are behaving or answering a certain way because they're going to earn a movie voucher or they have some sort of incentive uh, to answer in a particular way. For us, when we're designing our own studies, uh, we can work on having a good design of our study to avoid these kind of problems. But it's also good for us to look at critically at other people's studies when we're having data presented to us. So whenever we are looking at a study, uh, things that we should think about, one is who has sponsored the research and also who has conducted it. So if it's a company that is conducting research on their own product, they've paid for it, they've written the report, then we may, may want to be a little bit more sceptical. They may have researched in, in a perfectly reasonable, objective way, but they may also have the ulterior motive that they want to use the study for marketing. They want to show how great their product is, and so we need to be a little bit more sceptical where we see those kind of conflicts of interest. We want to look at how our sample was selected, or how the study sample was selected. How were the people picked? And how were they contacted? Did the sample that got selected really would it be a sample that we would expect to represent the population that we're interested in? Were there any measurements that were made? What were the questions that were asked? Were they objective questions? Were they asked in a way that wasn't leading or confusing or biased? Something that is going to be important for us to remember is that if we do see a clear bias in a study, then we really don't want to conclude anything about the population of interest based on that particular sample. We can still talk about the sample itself and say this is what we see in the sample, but we can't extrapolate those, we can't infer things about the population uh, if the sample itself is biased. This has been a Swinburne production.